Today we're going to go over what we see as the best travel strollers available on the current market. For those of you getting geared up for summer adventures, meaning mainly ultra compacts, but also including a couple of gate checkable larger models as well, just in case you're headed somewhere with rougher streets. So let's hop right into it then, beginning with the Boogaboo Butterfly, which has the key advantage of larger than average seat dimensions that include a 56 centimeter backboard and a 19 centimeter adjustable leg rest, two elements that, together, extend the age at which a child will have a comfortable napping position beyond what is offered by most other travel strollers. On top of this, the Butterfly also has a large and accessible shopping basket and is built quite sturdily for its size, making it a good investment for the long run rather than just something to use on holiday. The Butterfly folds down to within the IATA's guidelines for cabin luggage and has a one-handed, one-step folding process that won't leave you struggling at the gate. Its shoulder strap is a little too short for comfort in my opinion, but the leg rest does double as a handle, and all in all then, in my opinion, the butterfly can be a great choice for travel to any smoother destinations, like amusement parks or big city sightseeing, provided that the roads don't get too rough, as the model has somewhat smaller than average wheels, and also provided that you won't need to carry your stroller folded for too long. Next up is the Baby Zen Yo-Yo 2 which, unlike the Butterfly, is one of my favorite travel options for situations where you'll need to carry your stroller a lot due to its long padded shoulder strap as well as its slim folded profile, which makes it more comfortable to have under your arm. Like the Butterfly, the Yo-Yo also folds down to within cabin luggage guidelines, and Baby Zen has even gone the extra step of working to get the model specifically approved as cabin luggage by a wide variety of airlines. Folding the model takes a tad more work than with the Butterfly, and the lack of an inbuilt leg rest and shorter seat back make it more of a just getting around model rather than a mobile easy chair. But note that the Yo-Yo does have larger wheels than the Butterfly, which gives it more versatility for handling broken sidewalks and gravel and stuff when you need it to. And in my opinion then, the Yo-Yo is a good pick for backpacker style traveling where you may need to carry your stroller a lot on buses and trains, and you're never entirely sure what sort of ground the next station will bring. All right, moving on is the Jules Air Plus, another well-manufactured and much-loved model that combines some of the positives of both a yo-yo and butterfly with its easy, one-handed, one-step fold, folding down to IATA standards, having a comfortably functional shoulder strap, a large and accessible shopping basket, and having similarly sized wheels to the yo-yo for that little added ability to negotiate rough patches. There are a couple of negatives with the model, in a somewhat fiddly zipper that you need to zip to get the seat fully upright, as well as the lack of an inbuilt leg rest. But that being said, the Air Plus does have a generously tall backboard, and a leg rest can be purchased as an extra accessory, which is also the case with the yo-yo, by the way. On top of this, it's worth noting that the 10-year transferable warranty that Jules provides with all their strollers is by far one of the best guarantees on the market, making the Air Plus a worthwhile, all-round useful ultra-compact to consider for a wide variety of travel situations. Up next is the Leclerc Influencer, which is built by a smaller brand than the other models in this video, but which, nonetheless, is simply and sturdily designed and brings a variety of positive characteristics to the table, including its super easy auto fold, seat dimensions nearly as large as the butterflies, which includes a generously long inbuilt leg rest and decent sized wheels for tackling rougher streets when you need it to. The downsides of the model are somewhat too much distance between the seat back and the central harness, the need to remove the rear wheels in order to get it within the IATA's cabin luggage guidelines, and the lack of a shoulder strap, though note that the bumper bar does double as a carry handle. These negatives aside, however, the influencer still hits a lot of the bigger marks when it comes to what one ideally wants out of a travel model, in my opinion, being easy to fold, sufficiently sturdy and terrain versatile, and being comfortable for naps as well as just getting around. And in addition, it also comes with a little more extra stash included with purchase versus other similarly priced models. Moving on, we get to the first of two budget choices for those parents not looking to invest too much into their travel stroller. And first of these then is the Baby Jogger City Tour 2, which at 250 bucks is about the lowest I've seen if you still want something acceptably durable. 
the Tour 2 has the advantages of a very deep recline and an inbuilt adjustable leg rest, and it also has an easy one-handed fold and wheel size on par with the Yo-Yo and Air, though there are a few negatives to contend with as well, in that there's no shoulder strap or handle for more convenient carrying, you need to remove the wheels to make it acceptable as cabin luggage, and even then it's right on the border, and with the fact that the wheels can be a bit clackety over bumpy ground. That being said, the overall strength of the Tour 2's chassis is quite solid, and if you're looking then for the lowest price possible, perhaps, for example, because you have little use for a travel stroller beyond your holiday, then the Tour 2 can be a good model to look at in my opinion. The other budget option that I feel is worth mentioning is the Ergo Baby Metro Plus, which, provided that you don't go for the deluxe version, clocks in at only 50 bucks more than the Tour 2. The Metro Plus has also shown itself to be a pretty durable model versus the wider market, has a one-handed, one-step fold, and has those same nice seat characteristics of a deep recline and an adjustable leg rest. The Metro Plus doesn't have a carry strap, though there is a minimalistic handle, and its folded dimensions also unfortunately push right on the border for IATA requirements, but these factors considered, the model is both a bit stronger in design and has a somewhat more premium feel than the Tour 2 in my opinion, which makes it also a travel option worth mentioning when talking about budget choices. Alright, the last two models in this video are too large to pass within the IATA's guidelines for cabin luggage unfortunately, but are still definitely models that you may want to consider if you're traveling somewhere with rougher conditions. And the first of these then is the Upper Baby Minu V2, which is both a bit sturdier and has better shock absorption and bigger wheels than all the models I've covered so far. On top of this, the Minu V2 also has a large and accessible shopping basket, a one-step fold, a shoulder strap, and a good-sized seat with an adjustable leg rest. Despite being above the IETA's guidelines, the Minu V2 is still sort of on the border for cabin luggage, and while I have heard of people not being able to take it on board, there are airlines out there that may let you do this if you check ahead with them. That being said, even though you may need to gate check the model, the Minu V2 will, in exchange, provide you with a much hardier and more comfortable ride, which can be a real asset if you're traveling to places where you can't avoid stuff like broken sidewalks, cobblestones, or pebble-strewn dirt roads, for example. And last up for our travel models today, then, is a somewhat larger stroller the Nuna Triv Next, which is included here because, despite being larger, its weight and folded dimensions are still within the gate checking limits for most airlines. And while the Triv Next might not be what most people think of when looking at travel strollers, what you get for going bigger is a reversible seat, a near flat recline, a large shopping basket, and terrain capability far beyond all these other models, making it a much more intelligent choice in my opinion if you're looking at, for example, stuff like really rough old style cobblestones, off-road trails, hikes on the beach, or sightseeing historical places out in the sticks. In my experience talking to parents, it can be really easy to get caught up with planning the plane trip, as opposed to thinking about what you'll need at your actual holiday destination. But this can be a mistake in my opinion, and if you are going somewhere rougher, then it might well be worth the unpleasantries of gate checking to get the comforts of going with a model like the Trib Next, rather than just going for an ultra compact. In any case, we hope you found this video interesting, and if you did, please subscribe as this sort of support helps us to continue making videos in the future. If you'd like to know more about any of these models, we have standalone reviews for all of them that go into a lot more detail, and links have been added in the description. In addition, if you're currently shopping for a stroller, we have a buyer's guide on our Patreon page which lists a wide range of models that we recommend, with a lot of technical and lifestyle related information. You can find it by following the link in the description as well. Thank you.